First, I like to take the advantage of natural brushes of Photoshop. The way it allows me to create lines in a more organic way makes me feel like I'm drawing in paper. And that's a very, very nice thing to have when you're working digital. Now I'm going to show you uh, how I use Photoshop and how I combine it with Illustrator. The main reason why I use Photoshop is because it allows me to use the possibilities of the brushes. The brushes are much more organic than the illustrators. I usually use uh, one of those standard brushes that have pressure sensibility. It also helps me to have a more dynamic drawing. In Photoshop, the thickness varies, so for me it seems much more alive than, than illustrator drawings. So, now what we're going to do is we're gonna draw a very simple character uh, and this way I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. The characters that I draw in Photoshop would take me about three times the, the amount of time that I use for those same characters in Illustrator. So it saves me a lot of time in terms of drawing. It's much more efficient for me just for drawing and I really love this. Uh, now, why do I mix programs? Why do I use Photoshop and also Illustrator? Because every program allows me to do stuff that the other doesn't. It's complementary. The image I take from Photoshop into Illustrator, I change it into a vector file using the image trace tool. This allows me to store more images and also it's a very easy way to change a pixel image into a vector image. The first thing that I do once I've finish the Photoshop drawing is that I save it, resolution doesn't matter, and I go to Illustrator. I place it and then my plan is to turn it into vectors. So Illustrator has this very nice tool which is called Image Trace. Basically what it does is it shows me how my Photoshop drawing would look if you turn it into vector. Then you just have to press the expand button and this is now vectors, all right? So every single part of the drawing is now like a piece of paper, like an individual part. And I can use every single part of those like an object. I can resize it, paint it, or if I don't need it, for example, I could always erase it. I'm gonna show you now, for example, the face is one separate element, the nose, the eyes. Every single part of it, it's a different element. Now. Why do I use this? Because I can uh, do several things. One is to paint it directly in Illustrator or take it into Photoshop. Another advantage that I have is that since it's a vector drawing, it's much lighter to store. I mean, I can have it here and if this drawing would be a Photoshop drawing, it would uh, wait, I don't know, 10 times as an Illustrator. So, for me, uh, for storing images, it's amazing and having uh, a library. Now I'm painting it in Illustrator. You can see how I can use the vectors uh, with the knife tool, for example. It allows me to play more like, like if it would be paper. For example, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to paint a shadow here with a little movement of the knife tool. And this is very cool because um, it's like a Photoshop drawing with, uh, with the colors of Illustrator. Now you can see how it works. I can always add more, more elements uh, on top of this, these freckles or beard or whatever. I can put some um, pictorial texture also. If I have an element, uh, I can copy it instead of, of, of painting it um, every single time. So for me, it's very easy to, to start creating textures to fill the draw. Once I have converted this image into a vector file, I can bring it back into Photoshop. And in Photoshop, it allows me to play more freely. I can, uh, again, take advantage of the brushes and the textures. Why do I do this? because if I have it in vectors, it's almost like selecting it in, in Illustrator, but with the abilities to use textures that Photoshop gives me. Now, for example, I'm gonna use the texture that I have 
you can also have a library of textures that you've done by hand or you've taken pictures of, I don't know, a tree or a wall or, or a floor and you can use it as a background texture. Now with the layer options, you turn your drawing into a transparent one and from there on you can start using the texture as if it was your background color. So the difference is basically that you can use textures versus the plain colors. For example, if I want now to use um, a brush to make a shadow, what I try to find is uh, one of those uh, brushes that have more textures. Now I'm kind of um, painting, giving it uh, shadows in another layer. And what I try to do here is, is to, uh, to add volume, but I, I try not to be too aware of, of, of light, for example. I just wanna give it the, the, the feeling of volume. Then with the layer options, I can always change the opacity to the point that I, that I want. What I want is to keep the, the feeling and the sensation of the handmade texture or the organic texture. If I took a picture from a tree or maybe from, uh, from concrete or sometimes when you peel off a poster from a wall that are great for working with. Now I take every single piece of the drawing, every, every space, and I can um, change the color of the texture. And <clears throat> with this, I keep the, the texture and I also get a variety of colors without losing the, the feeling of that or organic color. I use the Illustrator vectorized drawing only because it makes me easier to, to select the parts and because I can keep the, the file as part of my library. So this is the way that I interact with both programs. For example, now in Illustrator, I can always take every white part and start playing with colors. The idea for me is to, to take advantage of every, every program and try to have fun while I illustrate and making the process as natural as it would be doing it by hand.